Okay, you clicked on this video, so I'm sure you want to be able to do this. So what key is the song in? D minor. Alright, that's D minor. E... E sus 4 to E major. A minor with C in the bass. E major, B in the bass. A minor to C sharp diminished. Or A7 with C sharp in the bass. Even though you don't have perfect pitch, and you want to be able to do it now, then you should continue watching this video. You won't be able to do it now, but you know, within a reasonable time frame. So is it easy? It's easier than you think, I'd say. Well, depending on how easy you think it is. But I give you about one month, two months. Unless you're like severely musically challenged, like Titanic tragedy level musical illiterate, then maybe you should try something else, you know, like farming or bowling. But if you're just a normal musician and you've been doing music for a while, then this is for you. Okay, so today we're standing in a desert. There's a herd of buffaloes over there. And they haven't seen me yet. We don't know what happens when they see me. So, you know, even if you're not interested in music theory, maybe you're interested in man gets chased and captured by bloodthirsty buffaloes. They seem peaceful enough, but I don't know. I've been chased by cows before and they're fast. And I got to grab this tripod. Actually, I actually have another tripod there. My bag's down there and I got to shuffle out of here. So that could be funny. So stick around for that. All right, but you're here because you want to be able to listen to a song and just name all the chords in the song. There's four steps. First step is to listen for the bass line, the bass melody, the lowest notes. When we listen to a song as humans, it's easy for us to kind of hear the top melody, what the vocalist is singing or the violinist is playing maybe. But to try to listen to the bass notes and sing the bass melody, that's very hard if we haven't practiced. And I don't know if that's because we're human and we can just hear the high frequencies, like maybe other animals, maybe the buffaloes over here, you know, they're big. Maybe they're just hearing the bass note, they can't hear the main melody. Or maybe, you know, they're the type of cows that just hear the counterpoint in Fugues by Bach and they're sipping orange wine. But let's try an example here. So listen to this little song snippet. So you can hear the melody, but could you hear the bass? This is what the bass melody sounds like on its own. Right? So now if you go back and listen, now that you know what the bass melody sounds like, maybe now you can actually hear it in there. So, when you practice this, you gotta learn to hear those bass notes. Maybe the first time you sit down and do it, you can't do it. You're like, what is this? It's just a soup of sound, right? I'm like, how am I supposed to hear the bass note? Just practice, sit down at your instrument of choice, which I hope is a piano. You know, if it's a guitar, that's okay, I guess. Sit down, try to listen for the bass notes, play all those notes, try to kind of hear like, is it that one, is it that one? It will feel impossible in the beginning and you might wanna give up, but don't, just give it a few days because your brain is very smart. I mean, you may not be very smart, but your, <laughs> your brain is very smart. The human brain is like the ultimate adaptation machine, right? There was this story about this guy who constructed some sort of a hat with mirrors. So when he put it on, he saw the world upside down. And he insisted on wearing that for several days. And then one day he woke up. I don't know if it was a week later, two days. Suddenly his brain had just flipped the image. So even though he's wearing the hat, he's seeing everything straight. Then he took the hat off, everything's upside down. That's what you want to do with your brain. You want to subconsciously train it to do something that you thought you couldn't do, which is to hear these bass notes. So just push, push, push and train, and suddenly you will be like, oh, I hear the bass note, there it is. And then it will become super easy. Okay, that's step one. And step two is, oh, all right. So they, they spotted me. I think they're okay. All right, I, I think. Okay, we're safe for now, I think. They caught the scent of somebody else, I think, and started chasing them instead. I don't think they want to eat me. I just think they're curious. They want to lick my face, but I don't want that right now. So where were we? Step number two, right? Step number one was being able to hear the bass notes. Step number two is being able to identify those notes. Of course, you can do this with an instrument, but I mean, you'll bring shame upon your family if you do that. You need to be able to do it without an instrument. And how do you do that? If you don't have perfect pitch, how will you be able to name these notes? You go back to another video of mine. It's called How to Unlock almost perfect pitch. It sounds complicated, but it's actually a very fast, distinct method with an app 
where you can learn to just hear any note. Your friend plays notes on the piano, you'll name the notes. You hear a melody and you'll just name the notes of the melody without an instrument. How does this work? Well, you learn to hear the degree of the note in a scale. So obviously you need a reference because all is relative, but we always have reference. So you'll hear a note and you're like, that's the fourth note in the scale. You hear another note, that's the sixth note. And then you can translate that to whatever key the song is in, that doesn't matter. But when you can do this, you be able to apply it to the bass notes of the song. And then you'll be able to hear all the bass notes. Now you have them. What do you do now? Well, now you need to start identifying the chords. Hearing a chord and what chord it is, eventually all comes down to emotion. Anything we do actively, we think about consciously what we're seeing and doing. But things we're doing subconsciously or inactively that just pops up in our head, that is based on emotion in one way or another, or intuition or whatever you want to say. And when we want to get really good at something, we have to transfer that knowledge to our intuition. When I hear a C with E in the bass, I feel that it's a C with the interface way before my brain even registers like to say those words. And that's where you want to get. But it becomes so much easier when you also know the bass note. Because then you can kind of rule out all these other chords. And now you only have like two, three candidates to choose from. So let's go through them all. C. If you hear a C in the bass, and okay, let's back up. When I say C, I mean the first note, the tonic. I always talk about everything in C major. But you can transpose it to any key, right? So when you hear the tonic, the C, then it's C major. Most probably. If you hear D in the bass, that's D minor or D major. I made a video about that. It's kind of easy to tell the difference there. If you hear an E in the bass, E minor, E major, or C with E in the bass. I made a video about that too. That's a little bit trickier, especially E minor and C with E in the bass. F in the bass, that's F major or F minor. Easy to hear the difference, but you got to practice it and know what you're looking for. G in the bass, G major, most of the time. Uh, it could be E minor with G in the bass. It could be G minor. I even made a video about that. I don't even know why. That's so unusual. Stick to G major for now. If you hear an A in the bass, that's A minor. It could be F with A in the bass if it's like a musical theater or something like by Pink. B in the bass, that's probably a G with B in the bass actually. If you learn those chords and you learn to hear the difference between those chords, not all of them of course, you know the bass note. So you just need to know, is it an E minor or a C with E in the bass? Then you're gonna have this basic map of which chords are in the song. Of course, there could be colorations and there could be special cases. But that brings us to the fourth step, the step that you go to when the first three steps don't work. Or actually step one and step two worked, but step three didn't work. You didn't recognize the chord. Or you kind of recognize the chord, but there's something else in there that you don't know what it is. Then you have to go to the kind of more brute force way of listening for individual notes that might be in there. You want to hear the colorations of the chord. Let's say, for example, you hear that's an E minor, but you're like, there's something more there. I can feel that this is not the normal E minor that I'm used to. Obviously, you can start increasing your arsenal. You can learn what E minor 7 sounds like. You can learn what F major 7 sounds like, just like how you learn how the other chords sound like. But this is for the times when you're hearing stuff that is outside of your repertoire of chords. Well, then you sit down at your instrument. You play any note, basically, and you listen. Is this note in that chord, you know, in the song? You rewind. Is it there? Rewind again. Is it in another octave? Okay, maybe you didn't find it. Next note. Is it in there? Try to listen, scan through this landscape of sound and see if you can hear that note in there. If you've mastered the method of my previous video about hearing notes without using an instrument, this will be much easier because then you can kind of just close your eyes and just listen and like, oh, I hear the fourth degree in there. And then depending on what chord it is, maybe it was a C major playing and you hear the fourth degree, ah, it's a C11. You know, you don't need to know the music theory names of these things. You just need to know what notes are in there. This is obviously the hardest step. It takes a lot of work, but it's a fun step to practice because you get better and better and better. And eventually when you listen to music, it would be clearer. It would be like you're putting on glasses and everything is just like, wow, now you hear individual notes and you're, you just have much better grasp of the song. It will ruin music for you a little bit because you will be listening for like bass notes. So if you listen to popular music, you know, from now, you, all you hear is just A minor, F, C, G, and it becomes very tiring. You'll have to start listening to classical music or weirdo jazz, I guess, but, uh. but yeah, that's all there is to it, even though it's kind of a process. You can work on this for years to get better and better. But again, two months, maybe even one month, and you will be able to do some pretty cool things. All right like subscribe we'll see what i talk about from now on maybe from now on i'll do bird watching but it's always going to be beautiful like this lake over here there's two dogs waiting over there i'm going to go hang out with them see you guys see you